Hey guys, it's me Nez. So we're going to talk about spit. <laughs> but in the New Testament, there's it's used in two connotations, right? Uh, the first one is used by Jesus, and he he uses his saliva to in to heal people. The first one, let's look at in Mark chapter 7 let's start from verse 31 and again departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon he came to the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis or Decapolis and they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech and they beseech him to put his hand upon him so they thought oh he's just gonna put his hand on on him and he'll be healed well Jesus had other plans and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue and looking up to heaven he sighed and said unto him Ephatha <laughs> that is to be opened and straightway his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain and he charged them that they should tell no man that the more he but the more he charged them so much the more a great deal they published it and were beyond measure astonished saying he hath done all things well he both he maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak so a deaf and dumb person was healed using spit okay and it's funny how Jesus says, don't tell anybody, but of course they're going to tell everybody. Uh, I mean, I would. <laughs> so then going to Mark chapter 8, verse 23, this is another account. Number 2, let's start from verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man so unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. Okay, <clears throat> if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes, and made him look up. And he was restored, and saw every man clearly. Okay. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. Well, it doesn't really say if he did that or not. Um, but it's, it, I see, like, the parallels where he takes people out, you know, away from the town or taking them aside or away from the multitude to do certain things. Uh, I like that personal touch with Jesus. And um, the third account uh, for with Jesus using his spit was in John chapter 9 verse 6 but let's go ahead to verse 3 Jesus answered neither hath this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can work as long as I am in the world I am the light of the world when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So I, I really love this miracle because it shows that um, this creative, I mean, like God showing like a parallel or a reenactment of of God create the creator creating you know Adam out of the dust of the ground right so if he created man out of dust definitely he can create new new eyes for a blind man right so he made clay out of the dust or out of this you know the spit mixed with the mud or the dirt making clay and he is the potter so he molded like created a uh, new sets of uh, new pair of eyes for this man so that was really um cool that you know he's just demonstrating that he is god because who else can do this right and so we see that there that's like three accounts one two three and you know in the oh just like uh just for information you know like an fyi the guy who had the string on his tongue, I, I believe he was tongue-tied, you know, uh, probably from birth. So there's a condition called tongue-tie ankle, ankyloglossia. So I think that, so he loosened that 
um, cut, like loosening the lingual frenulum, that short, thick, or tight band of tissue that tethers the bottom of the tongue's tip to the floor of the mouth, making it quite difficult for, you know, to eat, to speak, to swallow, stuff like that. All right, back to the verses. Um, now, three times we see that Jesus uses spit to heal. And then three times I just noticed that he there's accounts there's three accounts of him being spat upon okay let's just read them real quick um jesus here in verse 33 mark 10 saying behold we go up to jerusalem and the son of man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the gentiles and they shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him and the third day he shall rise again okay so that he's talking about, he's like prophesying because he knows what's going to happen to him. He's going to be crucified and he's just letting his like, um, I think his apostles or his disciples, the 12, know what he, what is up coming for him. Like what he's up against. And so that he'll be crucified. And in in every account, it talk you know, that was him prophesying. And then um, 14, Mark 14 verse 65 and some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him prophesy and the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands and then another time it's it's mentioned is um verse 19 and they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshiped him so it's like this is like three witnesses you know Three times he healed with his spit and three times he was spat upon and um it's just it reminds me of hebrews chapter um chapter 12 where it, it talks about what jesus through all this what his what what he what his vision was what he kept his eyes on uh, it says in um, for us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher, finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God that's where he's positioned right now um, but he went through um, all that scourging and 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 reviling People spat on him out of disgust, disdain, you know, reproach. Look at all the shame <laughs> he endured. He was obedient onto the cross, you know, and onto death. And uh, he was made a little lower than the angels, right? He became man. God Almighty became man for us. Tasted death for every man. Um... So, and we, and we and we and we spat on him, right? And isn't it true that those who 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 don't how do I say who reject the grace of God, who reject him, aren't they spitting on Jesus? Aren't they crucifying? him again putting him to an open shame again i mean hebrew talks about it again in hebrew chapter 6 verse 6 if they fall away to renew them again onto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the son of god afresh and put him to an open shame you know you're presented you know you see you're enlightened with the grace of God and you taste, you know, taste of the heavenly gift, the good word of God, partakers of the Holy Ghost. You, you know of, of, of these things. Um, you've, re you've received it, but, you know, like the seed that fell on, um, I'm trying to know which soil it was. Where they didn't have root and then with the offense that you know the off the offense of the cross it's like they fall fall away from graves right 
I'm not talking about if they're believers or not. But when you crucify him again, it's like you are, you know, considering the finished work unfinished. And you crucify him again. You trample his blood underfoot. So that's what I saw with... um like this passage that you know he he's he spat to heal but then he was spat upon he was he was he endured the shame he endured the shame and his intention was just to heal the nations to heal us from our spiritual condition that's what he came to do jesus is um, the savior of the world I mean, he finished the work. Um, so I just saw the, the connections, the parallels, and just how it was used in the New Testament in two different ways. Like, it makes me just think and, and just thank God for all he has done. Praise Jesus. All right, I love you guys. Bye-bye.